about what senior leadership means, and Pat Scary certainly understands that and loves what John Davis did with his team. Let's talk about the Towson Tigers and the starting lineup. We'll see a group that should be fired up. One of the newcomers that's been very impressive is Brian Starr working the backcourt. We told you about Mike Morsell. Deshaun Mormon, Alex Thomas working up front around another outstanding performer, Arno William Adalamoto. And for the Tiger, or for the Huskies, excuse me, of Northeast University, you got to keep an eye on T.J. Williams, one of the most explosive guards in the country, and he's also helped by a graduate student in Alex Murphy, who played at Duke and Florida. It is T.J. Williams and the visiting Huskies in red, trimmed in black. We're underway. Glad you're with us this afternoon here on CSN. Our officials, Guy Pagano, Dennis Alaco, and Andrew Murata. And Guy Pagano calls a traveling call, first turnover on the Huskies. Towson's coming out with a straight man, but they'll switch to zones depending on the entry pass of T.J. Williams. They want to keep him off balance. It's going to be very important. This is a contrast in strength, this game, where Towson is very good on the boards defensively and Northeastern is a terrific offensive team. They run a lot of pick and rolls and a lot of drawing kicks for three. The first bucket of the game, and that's a good start for William Adalamoto. You know, talking to Pat Scary before the game, he said, look, if, if Marcel and Adalamoto have big games, they can win any game in the CAA. And again, finishing strong to the basket. You've got Deshaun Mormon, the junior from Richmond, Virginia, who leads the CAA in steals. Busting up, pick and rolls, and blowing them up is going to be really important. Boy, it's a swarming Towson defense today. Helping out, active with their hands. The guards are digging out balls, and they are off to the races. Here is Starr, a transfer from junior college. His first look no good over the back. Adalamoto fouls Murphy. Glenn, while we have a chance, let's take a look at your Geico keys to the game. Well, we talked about how efficient Towson is defensively. They lead the CAA in defensive rebounds and in all defensive categories, so Northeast is going to have to hit the boards. Don't let them get second chances. And for Towson, it's all about keeping T.J. Williams out of the lane and don't let him play the draw and kick game. See Towson straight man Morcell on T.J. Williams. They're switching everything on top. Underneath, and there is the finish as the Huskies get their first back basket from Anthony Green. Anthony Green playing peekaboo. Everybody's watching the wings, and he played peekaboo on the baseline for an easy basket. It's almost like pick your poison when you play Northeastern. They can beat you from three. You got to stop the dribble penetration. You also got to watch the big guys from scoring inside. Getting it in inside, but turning it over. Alex Thomas. Keep in mind, Northeastern's come into this game now. They've won eight straight. And, and this is a team that's one of the hottest teams in the country. They're coming on offense. A little shaky start tonight, though. Today. It's not, tonight. It's not nighttime yet, is it? No, not yet. You've got uh, you've it, got nighttime it, still ahead of you. It is dark outside though. A shot by Sean Osius, a very impressive freshman who has started every yes. game so far here at Northeastern. The guy that's getting ready to come in is someone Brent Harris talked about is John Davis, and boy, he's been the most consistent player for Towson. And a friendly roll for William Alamoto. Dalamoto is so strong. He, he's one of the guys he welcomes contact. He wants it. A lot of guys avoid it, or they're looking for the foul first. Man, he, he wants it, and he wants to finish with con contact to get to the line. Look how Towson is switching everything on top. They're sagging in. Man-to-man -man principles, but this is a zone. The three to shoot. A friendly roll in an unfriendly build, building, and that's why T.J. Williams is leading the conference. Boy, that's an old schoolyard shot with that spin. I don't know how he even got that up on the uh, glass. 
very difficult shot, T.J. Williams. Talk about a guy, one of the most improved players in the nation. And uh, talk to Bill Cohen about T.J. All he does is give them what they need. If they need him to play make one game, he's going to do it. One, he's the only player in the country, only player in the country, to average at least 16, to score at least 16 points in every game this year. The model of consistency and leadership is T.J. Williams. There you see a little glimpse of what we'll be continue to talk about the improvement from last year to this year in scoring for TJ Williams, but his Huskies trail by two. Oh, you know what? That's what it takes sometimes. You get a bad week, boy, you dig yourself a hole, you got to dig out. And this would be a great game for Towson to get to begin to dig out of that hole. Four early points from William Adalamoto. There is John Davis checking in. What a weapon that is to bring off the bench, averaging those double figures, but does his great work inside. And as Brent Harris told you, a great leader as well. And Jordan McNeil striking with the left hand to extend the lead to four. Nelson hadn't shot well during that losing streak. And, you know, you get it going. They're a good defensive team. They start making shots. All of a sudden, they're dangerous. And look what we're seeing right now. They're getting every shot they want. Unfortunate missed the layup there. He took his eye off the basket. See, that, that time he looked for contact, take your eyes off the rim, you're going to miss shots. That was Deshaun Mormon who scored earlier in this game. He's had double figures in four of the last eight for the Tigers. One guy you don't hear much about from Towson defensively is Alex Thomas. He's not putting up big numbers, but he really, for Pat Scary, has done a terrific job. He's got 16 blocks for the year. And Pat Scary knows that he closes up lanes. Well, Pat Scary's had... Talk about a guy that, that turned around a program. Man, what he had to inherit here was just remarkable. And now, you know, one of the top coaches in the country. From a one-win season yeah. to this here in Towson. By the way, Kevin Clark, Jim McCarthy, and Pat O'Donnell are Pat's assistants in his sixth season here at Towson. And has a beautiful CQ arena to work with and recruit with. Adalamoto off the glass for pretty good defense. Got his own rip miss, and Bold Brace blocked it, but it was out of bounds first. You see those second chances around the paint. With a guy like Adalamoto, you can't follow the, pet, the flight of the ball. Look at all the Northeastern guys watching the ball. No one laying a body on him, and look what he does. He gets the rebound. You got to go old school rebound. Find him, Adalamoto, and push him out of the paint. Forget the ball. Don't even watch it. Bill Cohen on the northeastern sideline is pleading for a clean block from Bold Embrace, but instead it's his first foul. There's a look at Bill in his 11th season yeah, at Northeastern, terrific. working with Chris Markwood, Brian McDonald, and Bobby Martin. 18 or more wins three of the last four seasons. And winning the, winning the CAA championship two years ago. Two years ago with Quincy and David Walker and T.J. Williams, which you didn't even hear about. Now he's leading the CAA in points and assists one of the best combo guards in the country you know these the nomenclature in the uh, boy northeastern shaky turnover start early but all the used to be well you're a one you're a two you're a three you're a four you know what even in college you see it in the nba but in college no more you're you're a player you're a guard tj williams is a guard he could pass he could shoot get in the paint that was the fourth turnover on the Huskies in the early going. Here's John Davis doing what he does so well, attacking on the inside. Moto with the rebound. Eddie Keith thought about a three, dishes it off. And stepping on the sideline, no good, the attempt by Jordan McNeil. Boy, I think it's too bad. If his foot size was a... One size smaller, that thing would have, that would have been a three because he didn't hit anything but net. That was a terrific shot. So we'll see if the Huskies can get their offense in sync. Got to get Alex Murphy going. Here is Murphy. Missing on that three. Tapped out. Murphy tries to fight for it. A battle, and here come the Tigers. Keith the pull-up. Nice. Under control. Three on two fast break, came to a jump stop, gathered himself. Terrific job by Keith. Inside there is Murphy, has it stripped, 
but they call a foul on Eddie Keith. Let's take a look at that last house and basket. After coming up with it, Eddie Keith drives, and as you said, though, Glenn, very much in control. And that's where you want to stop, exactly where he stopped, right at the foul line, because it gives and creates spacing for your wings. Hey, look, that wasn't an easy shot, too. The defense was there. The hand was up. Good defense. Made a tough shot, but took the right shot. You don't see much of that mid-range game anymore. Nope. Eddie Keith, very nice with that 14-foot jumper. Look at the year he's having, Alex Murphy. He's a big guy that can step out and shoot threes. You know, it's one of the reasons Northeast is so tough this year, is what he brings to the table in leadership and versatility with Alex Murphy. And there was John Davis blocking Maxim Borsico's attempt. Here's McNeil again, this time from the other corner, and buries the three. And this time he didn't step out of bounds either. But Morcel made the right pass, and that's something that even during his offensive struggles, Pat Scary's telling him, make the right pass, play defense. Your offensive game will come. Grace thought about it. Gets it to Williams. He pulls up. And T.J. Williams knocks it down to quiet the crowd. Composed, smooth. The thing I like about T.J. Williams, watch him tape on him now, takes good shots. I mean, he just doesn't take a bad shot. Here's, they're packing it in now. They know that Towson has not shot well from three. So this is a 2-3 zone where they're packing it in. That ended a 9-1 Towson run. Under 10 to shoot. They'll find Keith. And he's got another back-to-back well, -back threes for the Tigers. Rem remember all the struggles from shooting? Not tonight. So you take the scouting report, tear it up if you're Northeastern, and get out of that zone, and you better go man. The but it's early. But it's 11. early. Davis comes out high to bother T.J. Williams. There's five to shoot in the hands of Williams. He's double teamed, knocked to the ground and fouled as the Tigers bail out the Huskies there with that late foul. But John Davis and the Tigers have come out gunning. They've got some great to him. You got to keep your head up. You got to focus on the de details like defending, rebounding, and creating. And Al, that's what he's done the last couple of trips down the floor. He created a couple of baskets, a couple of nice assists. And I can tell you, his body language changed. You can see confidence coming out. Coach Gary said, if you can shoot the ball and you're open, I want you to shoot it today, but make sure you take care of the details. No doubt about it, Brent. He had 20 or more points in five of the first nine games this year. Nice. As Jordan McNeil, who's hit some outside shots, finishes at the rim. Boy, was that nice. Took two long steps and protected the ball beautifully. Used the left hand on the left side. He kept it simple. McNeil, a redshirt sophomore from nearby Mount St. Joseph's High School in Baltimore. Murphy still trying to weave his way through these double teams. Short on the layup. And the Tigers make it one and done again for the Huskies. How about this bench from Towson? Coming, guys coming off the bench and contributing right away. And this is why I say that Towson is they're so much better than their record. I mean, they're a deep team. They have so many different weapons. They start shooting the ball well, and guys get confidence. Yeah, he kind of rushed that shot, Mike. That was Mike Marcel on the miss. Take another look at McNeil, and we've been impressed with his outside shooting, but then here's a man who enjoys attacking after that turnover he created. See him bring it down the court with his right hand, but he was on the left side, so what does he do? He protects it, switches to the left hand on the left side. A lot of guys try to fancy it up, put a little spicy mustard on those drives and maybe go around the rim. He kept it simple and was able to convert, and boy, Northeastern is turning the ball over, and the score is reflective. They got to get the ball in T.J. Williams' hands. Keep it in the middle of the floor. Bill Cohen knows it, and just settle down a bit. And you still they're still in that zone. That is now the sixth turnover for Northeastern. Towson's only committed two to this point, as we're just about to reach the halfway point of this first half. This is a two-three zone. It shows as a three-two, but then it bumps down into a two-three. Pat Scary expected to see a lot of zone. So why not beat it the way Deshaun Mormon has done with that jumper? But Towson is red hot from the field. 8 of 13. 
But, Glenn, I think if you got Pat Steary right now, he'd love to talk about the defensive intensity totally. the Tigers have brought. And that's been, that's, you're, you're spot on. But the defensive intensity has led to some easy buckets. See, when you get some layups off your defense, you don't have to rely on grinding it out in a half-court game. You can mix it up a little bit. And it was that defense that creates another turnover to Bill Cohen's squad. That was turned over by the freshman, Maxim Borsico. Boy, Northeastern really struggling. Seven turnovers out. Only and field only goals. three field goals made. And how much time has gone by? We're into the second half of the first half. And Bill Cohen not happy with what he's getting from the officials either. See, this is what Bill Cohen, now he, he's an experienced guy. He knows, look at him, nothing negative coming out of his mouth. He knows what this team could do. They've come in here, they've won eight straight, and they just got to settle down, take care of the turnovers, and get you right back into this game. And let me tell you something, they got enough three-point shooters to get to, to make up that delta real quick. So number two, Br Bolden Brace picks up his second personal foul. The freshman from Santa Barbara, California will sit. And Alex Murphy back into the game after a brief, brief rest. Anthony Green also in. As the Tigers with a rare miss, they've been red hot to start this game. Davis on Murphy, strips the basketball off of Murphy. Another turnover created by great defense of John Davis and Towson. Now John Davis just stays down. Watch his left hand. Left hand bangs it down. A lot of times, depending on the angle where the officials are, that will look like a foul because of how he came down, but that's good officiating. They were right on it. That was a clean block. Great replay by our CSN crew here in Towson this afternoon. Davis, not usually known for his three-point performance. He had won only four of 18 to that moment, but he's feeling it like the rest of his teammates. Boy, I've seen Johnny Davis for a couple of years now, and He's one of the nicest kids you could ever meet. He always comes over and says hello. He wants to talk, and he is having a terrific year. The most consistent player for Towson. So a big bucket by T.J. Williams to end a 10-0 Towson run and a timeout with some encouragement for Northeast content. Alongside Glenn Consor and Brent Harris, I'm Al Koken. Thank you to all the men and women in our crew bringing you CAA basketball here on CSN, the start of a season that will culminate with the men's championship in Char in Charleston, South Carolina, and the women's championship this year in Harrisonburg, Virginia. But right now, we've got regular season action as the Towson Tigers try and dig themselves out of a one and four conference start, and they're doing it in fine fashion, and they just pick up another foul. Sean Osius is committing the foul for Northeastern. Now that time, Northeastern... Got out of the zone, switched to a man. And uh, both coaches, very strategic guys. Uh, they, they don't mind changing up their defenses on the fly. You see Northeastern now playing straight man. Towson will look to a lot of dribble handoffs with Towson's offense. Turnover. Just the third of the game for the Tigers. The quick hands getting it done, Devon Begley. Well, one thing to staple this game has been Towson's defense swarming, active with their hands. Not a lot of second chances off the boards. Have created seven turnovers. What a tough drive. Man, was that under control. Little hesitation stood the defense up, and then he exploded to the basket. Justin Gorham, who's checked into the game for Pat Scary, commits his first personal. Or second, it's going to be on Eddie Keith, not Justin Gorm, as we take another look at how T.J. Williams got this done. T.J. Williams goes up. The defense got there too late, way too late. Gorham got there too late because if you're going to help out like that, you've got to be in front of the rim. If you saw when he when he released that ball, Gorham was underneath the basket. You know what that means? Too late. Yeah. 
So you see what T.J. Williams has done from the field, and there's a rare miss. Rare miss. He's a 77% free throw shooter, and Glenn, that was his 148th right. free throw attempt this year. That not only leads the CAA, it's third best in the entire yeah. country. Well, he's got the ball in his hands, and he he's efficient with his dribble, knows how to draw fouls. Sweet. So you've seen it all from Jordan McNeil this afternoon. He scored in pretty much every conceivable way except for a free throw yet. And he's got great rhythm in his bounce today. But you see he's, he's got he's releasing it beautifully. And Bill Cohen said after that timeout, he said, DJ, take over. You know, forget the playmaking yeah. thing. Yeah. I know I know I've been louding how you can play make, but you know what? No one else is making shots, so guess what? We're gonna keep it simple. Go to the basket. It's TJ time. He'll get to the line now for two free throw attempts. That was one thing that Pat Scary was bound to determine. He said, we're going to play multiple people on him and try and keep him off the line. But right now, he is 0 for 2 from the charity stripe. There's Jimmy Marshall with his first action, the senior co-captain from Richmond, Virginia. So one of two from the free throw line. It's a 15-point Tiger lead. Boy, as much as Towson has struggled offensively this year, they, they are looking efficient. I mean, they're making good passes. They're patient. They're making their shots. You know, it just goes to show you how games and confidence can change so quickly with the team. And that's a smart play. That's a good shot. A well-designed play by Pat Scary to get the ball to Davis inside. Normally, he makes that. And there is a Good call. a block, literally. I think the New England Patriots would love to have seen, would like to see blocking like this later on today when they see yeah. what Anthony Green just did there to pick up that personal ball. Yeah, that time he did a little head hunting. Good call. The official, officials have been terrific. Watch the moving screen here. Watch this. A little push. A little push. Hey, you know what? Didn't look that bad. Well, I yeah. think that second one. The was second like, one was a little bad. Yeah. I thought, but it looked worse <laughs> in live action. Alamoto working inside, yeah. but he traveled. Too many steps. Alamoto uh, really loves to get guys on his back, and he could dip his shoulder and use his. He's very. He's got a very strong base, so he can keep guys away from the ball once he gets that drop step in front of you. He's coming off a double double performance the other night against Delaware, as he had 10 points and 12 rebounds. Now another whistle, so the Tigers can continue yep. to commit some fouls, giving Northeastern a chance to climb back in this thing. Northeastern's settling down a little bit offensively. You feel it too, Al? I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're using Anthony Green as a screen up top, and they're a big screen and roll team. We just haven't seen much of it because Towson is just blowing by these screens. They're blowing them up. Devon Begley passed up a shot and got a much better one. See, they're settling down. Now it's about defense for Northeastern. Murphy on Adalamoto. McNeil has been the hot hand. Alex Thomas, number 44, working on the inside for the Tigers. Mormon, way out of control. As it knocked out of bounds, it'll stay with the Tigers, but they will only have seven seconds to work. See, what I like that Towson is doing is that they're trying to score in the paint. They're not relying on three-point shooting where they have struggled this year. So go to your strength. We've seen them make some shots, but it's not really deep threes. This is their strength. Nice move. So William Adalamoto, who's passed the thousand-point mark for his career that began at Wake Forest, is slowly starting to become the William Adalamoto that everybody saw last year. He was a first-team preseason all-CAA selection and a variety of different moves, but that scary, as you know, Glenn, hasn't been seen enough of this from his senior big man. You see when a, a Moto drop stepped and spun, you can't let that happen if you're in Northeast. And as soon as he turns his back, there has to be someone there or he's going to score every time he gets the ball. Defense was there a step late. Bill Cohen's going to talk about that at halftime. You can't let a guy like that turn his back. If he does, the guard's got to go in or someone's got to be there as soon as he spins to steal it. 
and dig it out. Checking back into the lineup is Mike Morsell. Alex Murphy dropping the first of his two free throws as the Tigers are now with seven team fouls. So the bonus situation for Murphy and the Huskies. Began his college career as one of the highest recruits in the nation, yeah. committing to Duke. Then he transferred in the 2013-14 season to Florida, where he finished up there and now is pursuing a graduate degree yeah. at Northeastern in sports leadership. He's on that sixth-year waiver program, and boy, is he helping Northeastern. I love him. I mean, he's a big guy, versatile, great locker room guy, leader. <laughs> So Jimmy Marshall with some good defense there on Star, And the Huskies with a chance now to possibly get it to 10 if they nice. can hit a three. But they'll take it at 11 with that finish on the inside by Anthony Green. Good timeout by Pat Scary. Here's why. All eyes were on the wing. All eyes were on the wing. Yeah, TJ on one side to score. From the bench, McNeil is four for four with nine points. Well, you get, you yeah. get bench production like that, man. That could take you a long way. In just eight minutes of work for Pat Scary off the bench. So that has been the strength of the Tigers so far. But the Huskies have calmed things down a little bit as we're approaching four minutes to go in this first half. Think about how important this game is. I mean, every game's important, but, you know, Tass has been struggling. You want to get some confidence back. Northeastern comes in here winning eight straight. They're 5-0 and in the conference, Al. You get a win here. To turn your season around for Towson. Good hands there by Jimmy Marshall, the senior knocking it out of bounds. There'll be four seconds to shoot for the Tigers. There he is. Oh, he missed the Dalamoto. Finds Zane Martin, the freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay, see. And he gets bailed out by a Northeastern foul. Now, you wonder why coaching so hard, it's that play. You, put, you do a good job, and with one second left on the shot clock, you, 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 you commit a foul, and that's why Bill Cohen right now talking to the officials going, hey, I don't know about that. It's one second left. My guys did a good job. They stayed down on defense, and now he's popping the thumbs on the sidelines. So the first points for Zane Martin. He had no points against Delaware after having a 9.4 rebound performance last Saturday at Elon. And that stretch that Pat Skeary and the Tigers had, that southern run where they had to go for a week with three games of the week all down south and that's also part of the reason why they started off one and four in these first five games that was Marcel had the good look and now we're going to get an offensive foul here against North e against uh, the Towson Tigers to give Northeastern the basketball back I'm not sure if that was a Dalamoto or Alex Thomas who tipped that in but it was over that's scary with a little word for Guy Pagano So now 18 fouls, one away from giving double bonus situation for Northeastern. Thomas didn't even come close in that first of his one and one situation. And here's the air ball serenade from the CQ Arena crowd. John Davis attacks Murphy and is fouled going up. See, when, when someone spins like that, Al, and I talked about that, using the Dalamoto as an example, how Northeastern, that time the guy was there, but you don't want to slap at it. You just want to be there. And if he turns into you, he turns into you. But when you slap down, watch this, slap, doesn't matter if it was clean. Most of the time, they're going to call a foul that way. So the foul's on Marshall, not Alex Murphy, as you saw on that replay. But John Davis back at the line. Just a little bit of everything in John Davis's game that has evolved over the years here. As John Davis now has got five points, two points away from reaching 1,000 for his career at Towson. Murphy with authority. How about that finish? And that's an impressive way to pick up your first field goal of the day. Hey, you want to spark your team? That's one of the ways to do it. Boy, that was nasty. And look at him on defense coming back. He knows the little things get your team back in games. Throwing it down like that's one of them. 
Now the other guy's got to feed off that now. Zane Martin challenged at the rim and is fouled. Well, I think that Murphy Dunk deserves a little closer look, giving you an idea why he was such a high recruit. A little Statue of Liberty Dunk. He had that ball up in the air. Nobody came and helped out. He came down late. Davis got there late. And uh, you really could see the versatility of him. He's, he's a three-point shooter as well. Give the Tigers credit. They come right back. They attack the basket. Zane Martin picks up the foul. That now is seven team fouls on Towson. Excuse me, on Northeastern, meaning Towson is in the bonus situation. So that was his first field goal of the day. A relatively quiet start for a man who averages close to 15 points and 5.3 rebounds a game. A nice one-two combination riding with T.J. Williams, who's been given a pretty consistent rest, is now back in the game here, has the basketball for Northeastern. So 2.40 to go in the first half. Still a comfortable 13-point lead for Towson as a perfect feed. T.J. Williams find Maxim Bersico for the easy two. Boy, he is unflappable, T.J. Williams. He, he has a feel for the game. He understands when, the when of a basketball game, when to penetrate, when to shoot. When you get that as a point guard, you have arrived. And boy, has he arrived. Eddie Keith double teamed and closed off. John Davis, he's got a thousand points in his career at Towson University. Congratulations to the senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on reaching that impressive milestone. Look at TJ Williams go to work, picking and probing under control. Boy, John Davis, that was a terrific, that, that thousand points was so classic of, Tom, of John Davis. Jump stop, pump fake. Made it nice and easy. T.J. Williams now with 11. He's got 1,113 points at Northeastern as a turnover on a travel call against the Tigers. Mike Marcel is thinking too much. That's all I'm going to tell you. I've seen this young man for a long time. He's thinking way too much. He's a lot better player than this. Watch Davis. See, he takes any possibility of a travel out of that drive because he comes to a jump stop. No pivot foot was established. Pump fake goes up, two feet, terrific play. I think he was looking for 1,001. He, yeah, was, he, he was, was looking, looking for, for a foul shot after that. A man who loves contact. That wide body, so strong, so impressive. So with a minute 15 to go, Devon Bagley off on a long three. Zane Martin slashes in one more pass, and Adalamoto is fouled. Perfect setup. By Zane Martin. Boy, you know what? That's the difference this game. It, it, so many differences, but the thing that's jumping out at me is the bench contribution of Towson has not been good. It's been spectacular. Everyone that's come in, Pat Scary pushing the right buttons, has contributed in some form or fashion. It doesn't always mean scoring. It's passing. It's rebounding. Every guy coming off the bench has, has been terrific. And Dalamoto, he's been so solid. He was a little slow in getting up after that contact. But he will be at the free throw line looking to get back into double figures again. William Adalamoto, who was a double figure and double double machine last year. Well, you talk about the thousand point performers. He's now at 1,080 for his overall career, both at Towson yep. and at Wake Forest. You know, we, we talked about the bench differential, the delta between these two teams. Bill Cohen doesn't play a lot of guys. He plays, you know, seven, eight guys. And But who's to argue when you come in winning eight straight? And there's a long way to go let, yet in this game, trust me. Long way to go. Northeastern will settle down. Brett Harris will be talking with Pat Scary to key our halftime activities. Almost a turnover that Murphy cleans up and finishes off the window. Well, you talk about alert. Murphy lost the ball, got it back, and saved the play, and he was even able to convert it himself. Tell you what, Glenn, a defensive stop here by Northeastern and a bucket at the yep. other end could make this a single-digit game, and what a boost that would give the Huskies take in with them to the locker room. Dalamoto challenged by Murphy, but he's got the finish. 
double figures again, up to 12 points. That's his 13th double-figure game of the season. Boy, you got you can't bite for his fakes, man. That was a terrific pump fake up in the air, got the defense up. Six to shoot. T.J. Williams with the long three. Man, is he good. T.J. Williams, <laughs> boy, is he good. I got a sneaky suspicion now that it's halftime, Al, he's going to take over this game, T.J. Williams. As well as he played, he's got a lot more left in the tank for this one. 100 514 Northeastern University has won six straight games here at Towson, but they've got their work cut out for them if they're going to make it seven. The Tigers have led all the way. It's a 10-point lead as we start the second half here on CSN. It's Towson with first possession. We'll see if there are any changes on both sides. Man-to-man -man coming out from Northeastern to start. And William Adalamoto feeling it for a long three. It goes into the hands of Devon Begley and right there for T.J. Williams to start things. Glenn, you heard Brent Harris talking to Bill Cohen about a good finish to the half. Northeastern started out three of ten from the field, finished nine of ten. Yeah. We'll see if that momentum can carry yeah. over. They, well, they settled down. It took a while, and they cut the turnovers down. That helped, too. And and TJ also went into scoring mode. And again, he hasn't missed a shot yet. Six of six. Mike Morcel picks up the early foul. His first and the team's first this half. So if you're Bill Cohen, how much does it have to be this man, T.J. Williams, and how much does it have to be everybody else? Yeah, and T.J. Williams, that's a rare mistake, a rare turnover. He threw a bounce pass that didn't come up. Big guys want that ball to come up to their waist. If they got to reach down to their ankle, that's what happens. They can't. <laughs> so it goes out of bounds. Well, T.J.'s got to look to score, and he's good enough when the defense adjusts when he gets in the paint, he'll find you, and that's when Northeastern's most dangerous. That's what has to happen. A block from behind on Morcell. Adalamoto, though, cleans it up with a pretty finish off the window. So Morcell still scoreless. Does have all three of the assists and another turnover. Deshaun Mormon, a classic finish as he got T.J. Williams to fly by. Boy, that was nice, huh? Slowed down. So many guys explode and get to the basket, and they miss layups because they're going too fast. Not that time, huh? Two slow, long steps, got to the basket, under control. You've seen that Euro step a few times in <coughs> yes, your I NBA have. Wizards duties, haven't you? Yes, I have, and, and this was nice because uh, he comes down and does a great job of staying under control. Watch, one, two, right? No travel, under control, let the defense go by you takes any of the officiating out of the picture, <laughs> right? Sean Osius with a first of two free throws. Talk about a kid who comes in with a high pedigree. His last year at Grandview Prep in Boynton Beach, Florida. His team finished 34 and 0, mm -hmm. ranking second in the entire state of Florida. He averaged 19.5 points, 9.4 rebounds, and 4.5 assists as a senior. So, after being fouled on a three-point attempt, it's two of three to bring it to 11. You know, when you're 34 and 0 and you get your first loss in over a year, what? Yeah. I can't imagine what that's like. I don't know. <laughs> Never happened to me. <laughs> yes. All right. I keep well, forgetting I your BU teams were. National powerhouse. We were good. We were 21 and 9 my senior go. year, yes. and I had a chance to go up and see Northeastern, by the way, in the Steve Wright Classic, yes. uh, honoring my former best friend and, and uh, teammate who passed away 13 years ago from leukemia. And Northeastern played Boston University at the time. Um, that I the game I saw it was a three-game tournament honoring Steve Wright who was uh, second leading scorer all time for Boston University. And it, this was a saint of a game, and that's, uh, that's Steve on the left there, and that's Steve behind me, number 33. That's our Rick Pitino 221 press, and there's Steve, number now, 33. From, see, from this picture, I see Steve hands up playing defense, yeah. and what, you looking for your man on defense? No, no, I was getting ready to steal it. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. <laughs> Go the other way for a reverse yeah. Tom Hawkeye? Okay. <laughs> 
Great pictures, classic look, and of course, Glenn played and distinguished himself as a Boston University player under one Rick Pitino. So more defense here. Well, this but a was turnover a, created, and yeah. there's the, there's a look at the, a yeah. good look at Steve right there. Yeah. Steve was uh, not he was a better person than he was a player. And my best friend, and, and you've always told me what a great player he oh, is. Oh man, was a great player. He was ahead of his time too. Six nine outside shooter. Um, had a great career overseas, and boy, what a great honor it was to go up there and have the Steve Wright Memorial Classic. It was the inaugural game, and LIU played, and Maine played, and Northeastern came in, and, and I really appreciate Northeastern, who was a rival school of ours when I was at BU back in the day when Jim Calhoun was coaching Northeastern. Rick Pitino w was coaching Boston University. They weren't they weren't stars yet, those two guys, but we had some great battles with them, so I really appreciate Northeastern participating in the Steve Wright Classic. Glenn, we're seeing more great defense by the Tigers. Another block, this one by Adalamoto. He's got 18 points and yeah. three rebounds all on the defensive end. And Deshaun Mormon tried to turn it into more buckets. It's a 15-point advantage. It was 10 at halftime. Well, it's a swarming defense. They're changing things up. Playing man-to-man, -man, but switching a lot out top. Let's take a look at this last block as T.J. Williams is fouled there. Adalamoto again. Look at the inside presence. Yeah, well, Two that, hands. And that's helped. That's helped defense. That wasn't his man. So he came and helped out beautifully and got himself in a good position. I'm not sure what. That ball might have slipped out of his hands there I because I, I'm not sure what was going on with that play offensively. I think the only thing missing there was a net and sand under yeah. Adalamoto's feet. I think uh, I think that block was uh, as surprising to Adalamoto as it was to us. Boy, and what a luxury it is for Pat Scary to take Thomas and Adalamoto out yeah. now, and with the bench contribution that you're getting now, and you come in the game with Johnny Davis. Right. So two free throws from T.J. Williams, much needed. Checking out of the contest, Sean Osius. Bolden Brace back in, so in exchange of freshman for Bill Cohen. Now a little full-court pressure from the Huskies. Nice job by Davis, making himself available. See, see what he did there? He helped out Eddie Keith. Made himself available. He didn't just stand and watch. And that might have been a turnover. Northeastern back to the zone. And they're packing it in. Look, they're giving up three-point shots here. Four to shoot. Not a bad shot. Hey, if Northeastern's going to get back in this game, they've got to do a better job on the boards and got to find a way to get Alex Murphy involved in the offense. He's got to take shots and make shots. So and no Adalamoto, no problem. Eddie Keith with the rejection. Keith calls for it in the corner. Spins baseline. The kick out to Gorham and uh, the reset of the Towson offense. You think about defense this game, Al? Clearly, the Tigers from Towson have been the aggressor. They've been the aggressor. I mean, they have been much more aggressive than Northeastern defensively. Mormon can't get a drop. That's why, Glenn, those field goal shooting percentages were almost so yep. deceiving because I thought both teams, but particularly Towson, has done a great job defensively. They really have. And also, not a lot of second chances for Northeastern. Deshaun Mormon picks up another foul, again putting T.J. Williams in an advantageous situation. So it's been rejection after rejection. Kind of examining his left foot, see if there's any injury. Brent Harris yep. has been keeping a close eye on all of that. Isn't Brent Harris part uh, physician as well, so he can determine um, what the injury is? You know what? This has been strange because it's been a low assist game for both teams. Right now, Northeastern only has three team assists, and Towson only has five. So it's been a lot of ISO basketball, not a lot of ball movement creating assists. Alex Murphy with the air ball, not what Bill Cohen wanted coming out of that timeout. And there's another outside shot. 
by John Davis. And that was an assist. I think it might have come from Martin. Might come from Zane. It was either Zane or Johnny Davis who threw that pass. So Davis has got nine. Dalamoto leading everyone with 18. He's back in the contest. And is challenging Murphy right here. Murphy looking for help. Brace. Good defense. Look at his defense, man. They're, they are just staying with every, every Northeastern player. Anthony Green got a lucky bounce to his hand, but did the rest with it. The sophomore from Quincy, Mass, pounds that home. So you play good defense, and you forget the box. <laughs> you go, you know, you go 35 seconds, and you play good defense, and bam, you forget one thing, and the coach is popping those thumbs. Six points, six rebounds for Anthony Green. Star turns the corner, passes along the baseline, but hit on the baseline. Turnover, Towson. So Brian Starr has been relatively quiet after yeah. coming off a career high on Thursday night against Delaware. Starr had 18 points in that contest. Is averaging nine and a half his last six, all as a starter. So with him inserted into the lineup, Pat Scary was looking for a little spark. He got it Thursday night. But right now, Brian Starr has been held without a point to this juncture. Brace. That was a big-time three from Bolden Brace. He is just a 27% three-point shooter, but now he is 17 of 60 on the season. Inside for Adalamoto. It was blocked. And a jump ball situation, and possession arrow will favor the Huskies. Anthony Green getting the job done inside on William at Alamoto. Well, I tell you what, Northeastern did a really nice job there, double teaming that first pass and a little helter skelter defense and forced up a, a just a quick pass and Towson wasn't ready for it. So can the Huskies get it to single digits? The deficit has been mostly double digits all the way. T.J. Williams knocked out of bound from behind as apparently that left foot of Eddie Keith is just fine. See, T.J. Williams can't do it all by himself. I mean, right here, he's double teamed. You know, he went, tried to draw the foul, which was the right move, and he might have gotten fouled with the body on that play. But somebody at the point to this is somebody else is going to have to step up from Northeastern to help out T.J. Williams. Somebody's going to have to start making outside shots. That was Eddie Keith's second block of the game, both in this half. And Thomas picks up a unnecessary foul yeah, coming out foul, a little yeah. too high to try and slow down T.J. Williams. That's number three yeah. on Alex Thomas. And that's not how you want your big man to pick up a foul is out behind that three-point line. And Pat Scary knows it, too. He's like, hey, man, if you're going to foul somebody, foul him in the paint. Yeah. Protect Glenn, the basket. And, Glenn, that's five team fouls now yep. with 13 minutes to go. That's a fact. The last thing Pat Scary wants is Northeastern to climb back nope. in it with the clock off. And Northeastern's a good free-throw shooting team. Big collision. T.J. Williams and McNeil are still both down. I don't know if T.J. Williams hit his head on McNeil's knee or something, but... Well, he looked like he was yeah, rubbing like his forehead when he got he up. stumbled. Yeah, he didn't have the ball, and then he, he, he got tripped, actually, and then it looked like his shoulder and his head went into the hip of McNeil. But he's all right. And obviously a good no call from our officiating yes. group of Guy Pagano, Dennis Alaco, Andrew Murata. Brace it one three, almost had it stripped. Hey man, when you hit one, take the next one. Yeah. What are you passing it up? Shoot it. And the bench just jumped up and they're yelling the same <laughs> yeah. thing. Shoot the ball. Although Glenn, I gotta say, I've been very impressed with the defense of Zane Martin. Yes. The freshman from Philly playing for Towson, who almost made that strip and is keeping a close eye. What you have with Brace. Towson's personnel. Also, there he is. He's shooting that one. See? Shoot it. With the shot clock winding down, back-to-back -back threes for Bolden Brace. See, now if I'm Bill Cohn, and if Brace passes the next ball, I take him out and tell him, go back in and shoot it again. So an 8-0 run has made it a seven-point game. The Huskies finally have a single divot, divot, a single digit deficit you, you, to see, work with. You're already thinking golf season. Yeah. <laughs> 
Second chance provided by Keith. McNeil can't convert. Anthony Green doing a nice job on the boards. Hey, Northeastern getting back into this game. Al, it's a five-point game. You know how they're doing it? Threes. Threes get, get you back into this thing real quick. Devon Begley buries the... And putbacks happen. And this is what we're getting. We, we were talking about this. Who's going to step up and help out, TJ? Well, guess who it is. And it's been a couple different guys, too. Devon Begley hit the big three right before break. Northeastern started one of seven from behind the arc. Since then, they are three for three. All three part of this 11-0 run that the Huskies are on. It's been a tale of two halves right now. And Northeastern staying composed. And you give Towson credit. They're, they're sticking around also playing tough defense. This ball is kicked out, so 15 seconds will go on the shot clock when the Tigers inbound after this break. One of those late threes has come from Bolden Brace. Watch out, Tigers. The Huskies are right there. It's the closest it's been since 8-4 early in the contest, and the Huskies have wheeled into what was at one point, Glenn, an 18-point Towson lead. Sometimes three-point shooting. Can, sh can really hurt you, shoot you out of games, and sometimes it could shoot you in games. Right now what we're seeing, Northeastern making threes, shooting them right back into this bad boy. And we're seeing the Huskies back in the zone that Pat Scary predicted they'd see a lot of. Another held ball, but this time the possession arrow will keep it with Towson. Let's check in now with Brent Harris. Now you're talking about the eight-game winning streak, longest in the conference right now, and I asked Bill Cohen before the game, what was the key to this run? And he told me it was all about D.J. Williams and Alex Murphy, two guys that are a little bit older, senior and a grad student, averaging 36 points a game. He said they lost four senior starters last year. It just took a little bit for them to gel. And he said it's not just about their scoring, but they have really brought along some of the younger players on the team as well. And there is a look at that senior that Brent just mentioned, T.J. Williams. Towson had only two to shoot off the inbound play. They turn it over, and Williams converts to make it a two-point game. Boy, we got a good one here. This is going to be a chess match and a physical chess match here in the second half. One thing Northeastern can't do, they're doing a good job with their defense, but they can't give up second-chance opportunities like they just did. So they did a good job there. Here's the steal, and T.J. Williams goes solo here. But their defense seems to be ramped up. They're doing a better job defensively. And um, it's interesting. Towson now shooting 33% in the second half. And credit North. We talked Northeastern. We talked Towson's defense in the first half. Now we're talking Northeastern's D in the second half. So Willie Madalamoto, after being fouled by T.J. Williams, knocks down the first. John Davis right back in for Pat Scary with 10.51 to go. Brent Harris is right. You know, he, he, everyone's talking about the emergence and the evolution of T.J. Williams, who... As I mentioned earlier, if the season ends now, he's MVP. He's uh, he's the player of the year in the CAA. Leads the conference in scoring, leads the conference in assists. But they lost 3,000-point players. So when you lose that, somebody has to step up. And boy, has C.J. Williams stepped up in that role. We talked earlier about William Adalamoto being a 1,000-point player in his career. He's got 20 points this afternoon. So the senior from Milford, Connecticut, getting the job done one more time, one of his best outings of the season. Begley uh, pushed off there, and officials were right on it. So the Adalamoto free throw stopped a 13-0 Northeastern run. Now can the Huskies start a, or the Tigers start a run of their own? Well, this is some game we got here, and this game is getting good. Northeastern now. Really making a statement, packing it in with that zone. And a turnover and quick foul. Eddie Keith reached in after the ball got turned over. Eddie Keith has the ball fake. I mean, they're packing it in now. So you want to move the defense. So how do you do it? You do it with ball fakes and go the other way. And that time you telegraph that pass right into the hands of Northeastern. And then any fouls from behind. Boyd has the momentum changed this game in favor of Northeastern. Still a ways to go. Yep. Well, there is a little foul trouble. Deshaun Mormon and now yep. Eddie Keith both with three. And that's 16 fouls yep. on the Tigers. One away from giving Northeastern the bonus situation. 
Devon Begley with the left hand. That's his shot. And that's off the window. So Devon Begley keeps it close again. Two points. And here's the issue now. We talked about how aggressive Towson's defense been, has been. Now they got to defend without fouling. And that's not an easy thing to do because it's part of who they are. It's part of their identity is to be aggressive. Begley with seven. Five of those in this half. And inside, there's the foul pickup against Anthony Green. Boy, T.J. Williams, you know, this kid has, has had so many good games. He's been one of the most consistent players in the country and also one of the most, the most improved player in the country. He's got a plus 14 scoring improvement no one else has done that this year so you know you talk about most improved players he is statistically the most improved player in the nation tj williams and they are going to give that foul to tj williams his first as right off the bench and into the contest alex thomas powers his way in for a bucket his first of the afternoon Boy, that time that surprised northeast and everybody was looking at the guards up top and thomas Snuck right in. Not a, not known for his scoring. Pump fake by Brace. Max Marcel did a nice job there. There's five to shoot. Borsico knocked away by John Davis. Now the Huskies are the team that will have to inbound with only two on yep. the shot clock. Well, terrific job defensively. Good help defense. And uh, Towson, that segment, man, they met every pass. They were there. They had their nose on the ball and met every pass as it swung around the perimeter. Ooh, that was part of the way in. Bolden Brace almost got the bailout off the inbound play. Boy, Mike Morcell to me is tentative. And that has the hesitation and him being tentative hurts his game. He's thinking too much. Well, this could be the time he could take something over and yep. break it apart. Another whistle, a foul here, and this is going to get on Borsico. You know, two guys that have been quiet have been Morcel and Alex Murphy. Yeah. Both of those guys, you know, could really change this game as, as it ticks down. One of those guys gets hot. Morcel with one point, Alex Murphy with seven. Put back again, back-to-back -back buckets by Alex Thomas. The big man from Hawthorne, New Jersey at 6'9", 250, using that size to perfection. Yep, leads the team in blocks and not known for his scoring, but guys like that hurt you because you don't expect plays like that from him. Nice pass. Oh. So Bolden Brace has hit a couple of circus three-pointers, but right there on the layup, couldn't get it to drop. A lot of guys can't pass the ball with one hand <laughs> off the bounce. Watch this from... TJ, one-handed pass. You got to finish that. More great work by our crew here in CQ Arena. There's Devon Begley. He's come alive in this second yep. half. His second three-pointer, and he's got ten points on the day. Eight in this stanza. That was pretty good defense by Mormon too. He was right on him. That was a tough shot. Davis powers inside and one. And Alex Murphy did not like that call. Neither did Bill Cohn. Good point guard, Al. When the game slows down for you, and the game in his fourth year has slowed down for T.J. Williams, which makes him the top guard in the CAA. Pretty impressive when you see a guard seven of nine from the field. Yep. Leads all Huskies with 18 points. John Davis rattles home his free throw, finishing off the three-point play. He's up to a dozen. See, he's under control. And, uh, you know, he knows when to play make. And, and if someone's not getting a touch, he knows to get that guy to touch. Look at that little spin pass. That was a terrific spin pass, but offensive foul inside by Borsico, who kind of pushed yeah. him his way past John Davis. But you see the little spin. Of Bill Cohen. You see that beautiful spin pass? That's a ter This is a terrific pass. Not an easy pass to throw off the bounce. Look at this. One hand, it spins into the defense, and the foul was before the catch. Oh. 
See, they're baiting. Northeastern's just baiting. Towson to shoot threes. Star. They say he stepped on the end line before the contact with Murphy. Well, you know what? Towson uh, caught a break there because that could have been a foul, uh, an offensive charge, but he stepped out of bounds first. So Brian Starr is still looking for his first points yeah. of the afternoon. He's got a couple of assists. And now we'll get a rest on the Towson bench. Borsico has been quite offensively. Boy, that's now another a foul. foul here. See, that's another one from Alex Thomas that now he's got to come out of the game and with four. Pat Scary didn't like see no need. No need for this. See, you know, you can't you can't keep, keep you can't stand up. You can't stand up. You can't play defense with your hips like that when you're double teaming somebody, and that's a good call, and that's four now on Alex. So he had been using that big body so effectively on the offensive end. Then here, there it gets him into trouble on the defensive side. That's been the only flaw in yeah. T.J. Williams' game today as T.J. at the free throw line is just three of six. Yep, shooting better from the field. Seven of nine from the field, three of six from the strike. Uncharacteristic from him. There's that 2-3 zone. You want to get the ball into the middle of that. Johnny Davis has to move. He's got to give himself a target. Give somebody a target. There it is. McNeil, who was good in the first half, can't get anything there. A collision now. Borsico picks up another quick foul as he and Keith came together chasing that loose ball. And that's going to be four on Maxim Borsico. You see, if you're Northeastern, you cannot, under no circumstances, give up second chances. You know, it's got to, if you're playing defense and, you know, because this is really what Towson does so well. You know, they, they, re, they, they lead the conference in, in offensive rebounding. They lead the conference in, in almost every category rebounding-wise, rebounding margin, offensive rebounding, rebounding offense, which is different, offensive rebounding percentage, they're number one. So this is what they do. You want to close this game out if you're Northeastern? Keep them off the glass. Don't follow follow the path of the ball. You know, Brent Harris, by the way, was a very good rebounder when he played high school basketball, our sideline guy today. Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> See, I would think Brent would be the great distributor. No, well. no, he was a very he'd good like, rebounder in high school. He'd be like school. their T.J. Williams, can get it really? done offensively as well as distribute. <laughs> so we approach six minutes to go. Exactly that, ready in this second half. It's gotten a lot tighter in the second half, but now Towson slowly regaining that lead. It's up to seven. This man, Murphy, could be critical if the Huskies make the comeback. T.J. Williams steps in, got too deep. Oh, Mr. Mr. Chippy, you know, he got bumped and lost his uh, that, that little two-step coming in. Just couldn't finish. Mormon slashes, almost lost it, fell to the Davis hands. Eddie Keith up no the window for a three. It's a 10-point Tiger lead. I'm not counting that one. There is no way <laughs> that, that he tried to bank that shot. <laughs> but CQ it Arena counts. alive now. And a blocking foul on John Davis with seven on the shot clock yep. at about 25 feet away. Now watch this shot. Look where he is. Boom. Look at the spin on that ball. That ball was actually on the other side of the backboard, and it spun in. Look where it hits the backboard. That's impossible to make that shot. That's, that's a horse-winning shot. When you need to win a horse game, you shoot that shot. Well, Pat Scary and his bench will take it. That keys a 7-0 run to stretch this lead back to 10. I played against a guy overseas that from the elbow to the elbow out further, he could, he was banking shots. Which everything is everything. Banking. He banked in everything from those wow. angles. It was amazing. At first, you know, I'm guarding this guy, and it's like, 
you know, he, he makes the first one, all right, you know, it was a lucky shot. Then he kept doing it. And I'm going, this guy could shoot. He could shoot from the elbows, bank shots in from the elbows. It was for real. So two important free throws for Devon Begley. The only way Northeastern is going to win this game is down the stretch is going to be making free throws. If they miss free throws, Towson's going to close it out. Uh, Towson does have 18 fouls, so that could be an important factor. Mentioning Begley, he's got 12 points now, 10 in this half. Tigers don't mind working a little clock. It's under 10. Mormon, beautiful pass to Davis, and what a finish. Boy, that was a tough shot. Boy, does Davis know how to use his body. He got that little shoulder inside and just kept that ball out. You used that big, broad shoulders to keep the defense away from the ball. Murphy can't finish on that. The putback is good. And down on the ground. Looks like that's Anthony Green. Yeah, I'm not sure if he got poked in the eye or popped in the nose there, but he was on a rebound. Guy Pagano was very quick to blow the whistle and make sure Anthony Green is okay. You know what, Anthony Green's been active. He has been active on the boards. Keep your eye on Green. Watch uh, the elbow. Ooh, elbow from uh, wow, John yeah. Davis. John Davis came in, and that, that's how you break a nose right there. In fact, I've broken my nose that way. I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have been in the paint either. I was a point guard. <laughs> that's right. Get, how to get out of there. You mentioned Green's activity as he heads to the bench to get... A much needed breather. Six points and now eight rebounds for Anthony pressure. Green. Broken by Adalamoto and knocked away beautifully by Devon Begley. That was a nice little one two two full court press was broken. Adalamoto comes in and goes in nice and strong. But and no foul. That's unreal. Dalamoto off the inbound, turns in traffic. The kick out for Mormon. He'll pull up. Borsico with the four personals back in for Northeastern, number 14 in red. See, the one and done plays is terrific for Northeastern right now. They, they, got, they cannot let Towson get second chances. Murphy, baseline, Davis got him going up. So Alex Murphy will be shooting free throws. John Davis with the foul, but it's been the senior from Philadelphia who has kept the top youngster. Now his dad, Jay, used to be a star at Boston College before Cohen was an assistant coach there. You might even remember, guys, Jay played for the Washington Bullets for a couple of years back in the mid to late 80s. Well, because Murphy went through so many injuries at both Duke and Florida, he got a six a season granted to him from the NCAA. Now, he could have gone overseas and played pro, but Bill said that he really wanted a college experience. How often do you hear that, guys? He wanted to come back for a full season of college basketball. And also, another Murphy on his way, his younger brother Thomas is already committed to Northeastern next season. Very nice. Yeah, Brent, Bill Cohen telling us also that that he has been such a great leader along with T.J. Williams because all the younger players look up to a guy like Alex Murphy, who's had all those accolades, who's played at the big programs, and he said he could not have been more of a, hey, guys, here's how it is in big-time basketball, and the kids have just soaked everything up that he has said. There is Murphy battling underneath, but Adalamoto got it. Eddie Keith with one more, and there's free throws to come. Boy, they are just so aggressive with their bodies. Towson on the offensive glass, man. We talked about this. Northeastern has to forget about the flight and path of the basketball, Al. If somebody's near you, I don't care where the guy's shooting it from. Get a body out of there because right now, Towson's got four bodies, and they're big bodies. Alex Thomas, Keith, Dalamoto. And Mormon, those guys right now, man, eat the guards, re everybody rebounds on Towson. The trainers, you know, the managers, yeah. and they send guys in just to rebound. Well, this is also maybe where the 
injury and the kind of dazed look that's right now in the face of Anthony Green on the Northeastern bench is hurting the Huskies badly. That 6'10", 252 body that would be a match inside for the Thomases and the Adalamotos is now resting after getting that elbow inadvertently from John Davis. Murphy again with another look, a couple of opportunities. He'll get free throws, but they need something from the field. Yeah, you know, Alex Murphy is a terrific player. It's not a great night for him, but you know what? He's still battling. He, st he understands he's not playing well. So does Bill Cohen, but he's still doing the right things. His father was a terrific player at Boston College. And I do remember him in the Bullets uniform. Yes. So there's still plenty of time left, 2.56 to go, but free throw shooting continues yeah. Yeah. to kill the Huskies. What did they I just, tell you, Al? Yeah. I, you know, when they went over the limit like that, you know, you, you win this game by making exactly. free throws. Or you could lose it. Right now, right. Northeast is not making free throws. So they are now 13 of 20 from the stripe. Yeah, that's those, painful. Yeah. And when you're sitting there with a seven-point game, those seven misses certainly can add up. A little 1-2-2 one, two, two zone press. That's when you can't hold the ball here. you got to swing it. you got to swing it and attack. Inside for Thomas. Tries to get his miss and another held ball. Northeastern has the possession arrow going their way. Well designed play. Alex Thomas had inside position on Murphy inside. They threw it over the top and it was a bunny to make and Alex Thomas just couldn't finish it. And ball goes back to uh, Northeastern. Alex Murphy was wondering would I get a foul out of that yep. instead it was held ball. All right, is this TJ Williams time? He's got the basketball in his hand right now. Gets a screen from Murphy. One thing Towson has done very well is they haven't not let TJ Williams turn the corner that much. Begley finds Borsico inside. He's hacked on the way up. Great pass. I thought he was going to kick it out. Instead, he found Borsico inside. Now, there's a three-point shooter open. I thought he was going to kick it, but nice job stepping to the ball there as well. Well, I think Mike Marcel was thinking the same way you were. Yeah. He was heading to the corner looking for that open man and said, Borsico slipped in, and here we oh, go again. Real, man. You, you know, I'm telling you, get back into this thing. Al, I've seen, I've been doing this for 25 years. I've seen so many games won and lost early in games. Right by not making free throws and something that rarely gets talked about yep nobody talks about it and you know northeastern the way they played they, they could have still you know this, this game should be tied right now if they make free throws and great pressure there yep and keith and Marcel didn't get their signal straight and eddie keith had to call a timeout before a five second violation so smart heads up back. but when you watch towson today as you talked yep. about that's not the look of a one and four basketball no, team, and we've seen it so far this afternoon. And everybody has talked about that as well. But we've got three teams coming into play today in the CAA, undefeated in conference play, UNC Wilmington, Northeastern, and the College of Charleston. Earl Grant doing a great job down there. Good pressure up top. Davis has to attack. And does. See how he faded away from the basket instead of going to the basket? If Davis didn't fade away, he goes to the basket and gets fouled. They were looking to try and get Bold and Brace on track for a three. They're going to have to start thinking about it. Good ball fake there. And Brace hits a three. Man. And a quick timeout as it's a three-point contest. So Bold and Brace has done his damage from behind the arc. He has got nine all three-pointers. Well, we talked about... 18 fouls on the Huskies. Just think about it. Northeastern makes free throws. What was it, eight minutes to go in the game is when it started? We're they tied. make free throws. Yep. They're probably up three. More full court pressure. Adalamoto surrounded, gets help from Deshaun Mormon. Eddie Keith, he'll get double teamed. They got to get it done quickly and do as Mormon sets things up with 15 seconds on the shot clock. You get foul trips to the line, man. You got to make shots. Marcel, can he get something? Oh. There's where you needed Mark Mike Marcel, and the big man delivers. 
His first three points of the day could not come at a bigger time. No. Boy, and that shot is just pure onions because Marcel has struggled. The fact that he even took that shot was terrific. Shows the character of that kid as well. Brace for another three. That ringed in and out. Brace diving to try and make a steal. Knocks it out of bounds. It will stay with Towson. They've got five seconds to get it across half court. Here's another look. Good hustle here. Tell you what, Northeastern caught a break there because they didn't step to the ball. This is big onions. Guy hasn't made a shot all day, steps up, and makes not a two, a three. And that wasn't a three on the line. No. That was a couple steps beyond it. So you got, someone's got to step to the ball here. Remember, they've got five seconds to get it across, and a foul on Alex Murphy. He can't believe it. Neither well, can Bill Cohen. They had a foul, though. They had a foul. So this will make it a, it's a one and one situation, but it's not the double bonus with two automatic free throws. Although William Adalamoto this afternoon has been a perfect eight of eight yeah. at the strike. You know, what's funny about this game is, you know, we get a chance to see Towson, who has proven that they're much better than their record, right? Morcel has been playing. He's, he's a much better player than the way he's been playing. Murphy, Alex Murphy, is a much better player than the way he's played. But these guys still make plays. They're ball players. Alex Murphy has done some nice things down the stretch. He continues to battle. Didn't have a great game. That could prove to be a critical miss if they can get a three here. Instead, they work inside. Now kick back out. Devon Bagley bangs it home. And another quick timeout by Northeastern. 35.9 to go. And we're back to a three-point contest. What a great pass. In big contests. Pat Scary knows right now that, you know, you're talking about two of the top teams in the CAA in steals, so you can't turn the ball over. These teams are very crafty. Turnovers are going to be critical here. They had Marcel Trapp, but he finds Davis for the big-time finish. Another key play from Mike Morcell to senior Johnny Davis. Big time play. Morcell did a great job ripping through the double team and looking ahead. Oh, my goodness. That thing looked good, didn't it? It did. Huh. Found back of the iron, and now Adalamoto gives himself some room as he is fouled in desperation by the Huskies. How about this play for Morcell and the finish from Davis? Look how he rips through this triple team. Terrific job protecting the basketball, looking ahead, and Davis didn't wait for the contact, just went up nice and strong. Look at this. Three guys on him, was able to get it off, and the good thing about that was he didn't throw it east to west. He looked up north to south and found Davis for the flush. Man, it's get quiet in here, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, because we had jinxed William and Alamoto before his last free throw. This time he's perfect because we didn't say anything. I was, were, I was afraid to say anything because <laughs> someone would hear me. Again, if you joined us late, you missed Brent Harris, who told a great story about the senior John Davis, a true leader, frustrated, angry at the way his team was playing, an 0-4 start in the CAA, and John Davis said enough of that, had a players-only meeting. The team aired a lot of things out, and John Davis aired a lot of players out. And we have seen two outstanding performances back-to-back -back by the Towson Tigers since that point. Alex Murphy finishes with under 10 to go. Boy, nice play by Murphy. See, he's a baller. You know, he, he doesn't care. He didn't have a good game. He's still playing hard. So this will be free throws down the stretch as Northeastern can do nothing now but foul and see if Towson can go cold at the line. The sign of character in a player is when they're not playing well and they still make plays. Like, like Murphy, like Morcell, didn't have great games out, but they made plays down the stretch. We talked about John Davis. You were just talking about him, Al. You know, he doesn't practice because he's dealing with this stress reaction, so they just use him in games. So he can't get a lot of practice. He practices a little bit, you know, come out and shoot a little bit, but... They, they want to make sure that thing doesn't flare up. And this Towson Tigers got, they're at Hofstra. They are, they're on a little road trip after yep. this thing. 
And next Saturday, we'll have the Tigers and the Hens at Delaware here on CSN at 2 o'clock. So Pat Scary, happy to be home for these two games after starting with three of the first CAA games on the road, including that southern stretch. They turn it over to the Tigers, and Pat Scary and Towson improves to two and four in the conference. They knock off Northeastern 74 to 67 as they.